and justice for all. I hold it. Question done. Minutes have been approved. Adoption of the gender. Could I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moving properly. Second, that we accept the agenda as presented. Question? All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Opposes? None. Ayes have it. The agenda is approved. Going back to action item number one. The good news regarding the general fund budget is uh, Lisa Johnson. Thank you, Dr. Lance, board members, and Mr. Price. Um, if you remember, when you approved the budget back at the end of June, we also mentioned that we had just found out the state had passed a budget, that we were going to get some additional revenue and um, four teacher salaries, and we would come back to you with that amount and ask for your approval. So tonight, um, the budget format is the same as you saw before. The only changes are to the state funding which you can see is right at $1.9 million. And then the only changes in the expenditures are directly related to teacher salaries and benefits at 1.9. So that would make our new budget 99,101,476. And um, we are ready to go, go forward at your direction. Can I answer any questions for anyone? Being none, the administration <laughs> recommend approval. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to ask myself. Oh, sure, so sure. We, Go ahead. That's good. Are we still trying sorry. to find a way to get to that $15? <laughs> no, sir. Right now it's $13. I know it is. I would say we're still going to work on um, it. Certainly, at your direction, we'll we'll try to, okay, to do well, whatever you need that's us what to I do. Like to see. Okay. Sure Thank you. Yes, sir. And just just to clarify, if I may, the thirteen dollars is the starting, <laughs> the starting salary. Yes, sir. Right? Zero starting years. Hourly wage. So we have people. Brand new. No, you know, no experience. Okay. So yes, therefore, sir. when you're up on the steps, you're really, you're making. Yes, 15 sir. plus. They're increased. Each step is an increase. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Good. Last chance after the budget. Board becomes codified. Go for it. Being none, the administration recommends the approval of the revised general fund budget for 2022-2022 as presented to include total 
annual revenue and expenditure amount of $99,101,476, which permits the district to utilize additional state funding to raise the salary of each teacher by $2,000 from the amount approved in the June 28th, 2022 meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been in moved and probably second that we accept the revised general fund budget. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposes? Ayes have it. Good luck Thank for a second you. time. Thank you. Now we're into Ms. Thompson. Yes, sir. Good evening, Chairman Lance, Mr. Price, board members. Um, at the last board meeting, um, sorry, Dr. Giles and Dr. Hamill made a presentation to you all about content and credit recovery, and they shared um, original drafts of, of both the policy and the administrative rule that I have before you tonight for a formal vote. Those were as admin, um, information items. And um, tonight we just have them for, for first reading. The first one is the, the policy itself, which requires two readings. Um, the, this is IKADD, Content and Credit Recovery. And this we have taken um, verbatim from what the State School Boards Association suggested as a model policy, which they took almost verbatim from what the State Department of Education had put in the uniform grading plan. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of room for option with this. There wasn't any real place for to select anything. <laughs> Um, we could add to it if you if there was something that that you felt was important to add, um, but but this is um, essentially what both the state department and the state school boards association kind of came to as their suggestion for credit and content and credit recovery. Any questions? Yes, I got one. I thought I raised this issue the last time. Maybe not. I might have been dreaming. Where it says student athletics or student athletes? Yes, Are sir. Are you with me? Uh huh. The district athletic director should be consulted for more information. Are we definitely going to have a, uh, uh, a, a, a student? Uh, I think I, I did bring that up the last you time. You did. I remember now. Yeah. yeah. You did. Um, yes, sir. And we can certainly um, change that to, and I don't remember you all, I think maybe Dr. Giles had a, a good wording suggestion for that of, uh, did you want it to be or his or her designee or um, superintendent or his designee? I thought the recommendation was, um, if I recall correctly, something to the effect a district administrator. Wasn't that right, Mr. Price? Something yes, like that? Because okay. I think I you, you're so. the one who chimed in on that. Yes, sir. We, we have our executive director for secondary schools is our district contact over athletics. And so we can make that revision before final reading. Absolutely. To make sure it's accurate. Yes, sir. Thank you for keeping our feet to the fire, sir. Thank you. Um, so I will make that, that change before the, the second and final reading unless there's other changes that you'd like to make. Okay. Anybody else? The administration, I, I guess, were rather patient and after the suggested Revision. revisions have been made, uh, for policy IKADD, uh, accept the recommendation. The first reading. Yes, sir. Do I have her thing? Or? Oh, second. Second. It has been moved and probably second that we accept the recommendations regarding content and re credit recovery. Uh, with the necessary changes as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposes? None, ayes have it. Policy, contact, and credit recovery has been accepted with the necessary changes. 
Stomps. Thank you. Um, so the next one is the accompanying administrative rule, and this requires one reading. Um, this is, again, what the State School Boards Association proposed from what the State Department of Education had required. Um, and you'll see in this one that there are a few places that are highlighted um, under the on the first page under the topic of grading, on the next page, um, the second paragraph, and, and a few more paragraphs down below. Those areas that are highlighted were um, places where both the State Department and the State School Boards Association gave the district discretion to make certain choices. Um, so for example, under the, the category of grading, uh, where it says content recovery assignments must be completed no later than the last day of the course, um, that was that was an option. You could do it five days before the course is completed, the day after the course is completed, whatever the district thought was best. And so Dr. Giles and Dr. Hamill pulled together um, a group of, of secondary folks um, who, who had some really good input into how this would work best for us. And so they made, um, among the, the kind of limited places where you could select, they made selections um, for the district, um, including that, um, you know, the, the next part about grade 50 or higher to um, in the initial course to, to be able to take it for credit recovery. Um, so, so that group kind of is the group that came together with, with what those suggestions for, should be. Um, but the rest of it is, is almost um, verbatim required by the uniform grading policy. So not exactly the most creative um, endeavor we've had. Any questions? Question, anybody? Seeing none, the administration recommends first reading approval of the adoption of policy IKADD R content recovery as presented. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. It's been moving second that we accept content and credit review policy administrative rule IKADD R as presented, do I have a motion? Oh, it's already been moved. Oh, it's already, okay. It's been moved and probably second that we accept the recommendations of content and credit recovery. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Opposes? None of us have it. Administrative rule IKADD, our content and credit recovery has been approved. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Moving on to the better stuff, Bob, uh, contract update, I haven't seen you in a long time. That means the money must be running low. <laughs> well, not too low. Okay, all right. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Price, members of the board, pleasure to be here tonight to give you another update on the billing program. Um, start with the um, turf field projects. Um, we have Waccamaw and Georgetown in construction right now. Waccamaw is scheduled to be completed um, around August 15th. Um, that's before the first scheduled game on uh, September 2nd. Right now they're finishing up the stone. The turf is scheduled to be delivered Friday and should be mostly installed over the next two weeks with another week or two to um, prep it and get it ready. Georgetown is a little bit behind. Um, probably about two weeks behind. We anticipate Georgetown being complete somewhere around the end of August. Um, and that first game is scheduled for September 16th. So we should have both those fields ready for both of the first home scheduled games. Um, our fire alarm projects at um, Kensington, McDonald, um, JB Beck, the Career Center at Georgetown and Howard Adult, all those are proceeding. Um, we're pulling wire on most of those. We have a number of devices installed, but we're still short on some components due to shipping issues. And it's unlikely that we'll get all of our components um, before school starts. We had scheduled inspections for the first week in August. We haven't canceled those yet, but because of some shipping um, issues, we're unlikely to meet that. We anticipated that months ago and the existing system, fire alarm systems, have all been kept um, running. So this won't affect school at all. We'll come back uh, once we get the components after school hours, complete those systems, and then schedule inspections for those systems at some later time. 
Um, the roofing projects, uh, Maryville is underway right now. Again, it's doubt, it, well, it's not doubtful. That won't be complete before the start of school, but again, we'll come in after school hours and complete that project. Um, Pleasant Hill is scheduled to start later this month. Um, they're expecting deliveries um, by the end of this month to get started. And again, they'll get started before school starts, but unlikely to complete that before school, and that'll be completed after school hours. Waccamaw um, High School, some of the materials have been delivered, but we're still missing some of the fasteners. They'll get started on that project probably by mid-August, and again, that'll be done after hours. And then our final roof project that we have awarded is Carver's Bay High School, and that'll start after Waccamaw um, High School is completed, but all that work will be completed after school hours. And on this Thursday, we take bids for J.B. Beck, and hopefully we'll find out where we had the numbers on that and we'll proceed with that. And again, that project is not scheduled to be done until next summer. Um, the marquees, you might have noticed we've had nine of the marquees installed already. Um, they've been installed. Some of them have power to them, but we haven't given training on any of them. So if you see them, they just have an American flag running on those. We're scheduling training sessions for next week. Um, to get uh, staffs um, trained on those signs so they can start using those. Uh, we have another three signs um, that will be installed with this week. That's Plantersville, Kensington, and Sanford Elementary Schools should be installed this week, and we should have all the signs installed before school starts in mid-August. Um, and then finally, we have um, some LED projects we're doing at Carver's Bay High School and Andrews um, High School. Um, most of that um, lighting should be done before school starts. We're just replacing bulbs with LEDs. And then we also are doing the auditorium at Waccamaw High School. And again, that should be done before school starts. I think that covers all that we're doing right now. But again, we don't have any delays, any problems that are going to um, have anything to do with shortcomings with school starting back in August. And with that, I'll answer any questions. I have a question, uh, yes, for Mr. Price. Uh, just a, a reminder, uh, help me remember, didn't we contract with them to do like a building study plan? Yes, sir, that is, that was part of our extension that the board voted on and approved. Right. And that would include a 10 year facility study. Yeah. And um, when will we expect to see that? Do you have an answer to that one, Mr. The, the staff has that 10 year study. Um, I, I, and we probably just need to schedule a meeting with you to go through that. And then we could give an update to schedule to have one, an update for our board as well. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. I have a question. You mentioned the fire alarm system and that, you know, you're waiting on some devices to arrive. So can you give a rough estimate of when you anticipate everything being complete? Right now, we think that everything will be complete close to the end of August. But again, we're at the mercy of some shipping deliveries and it's getting all the components. We have five schools. We're hoping that at least some of them will be done by the end of August. Most of them should be done sometime in September, if not before that. Okay, thank you. Charles? Sir? Would it be possible, um, Mr. Sabayer said that the, um, the turf is gonna be installed different places, right, the coming weeks. Would it be possible for us to get a a memo of some sort because I, I would like to see the installation being done to some of them just like what well, the great job they did with those all-weather tracks you know I, I was able to see that and it was really interesting how they did that work w would that be possible sir please absolutely yes sir I, I appreciate it yeah we anticipate that Waccamaw High they'll be installing that turf over the next two weeks starting Monday okay. but starting like this coming month yes sir okay we'll try to get a detailed timeline as best we can depending on the weather and sure. the contract right that's right, that's right. Uh, we'll provide a more up-to-date schedule through mr davis thank you thank you okay thank you Somebody. thank you summer school <coughs> program results Dr. Dost. good afternoon chairman Lance members of the board superintendent price district administration our school community who's here with us as well as guests 
Again, good afternoon. I bring before you a very brief summary of our summer programs. Um, just as a review, our summer programs included our middle and high school summer programs. Um, that was aimed to allow students in grades six through eight the opportunity to make up coursework needed for promotion that was not successfully, successfully, excuse me, completed during the school year. And the aim for our nine through 12th grades was to give students an opportunity to recover one core subject area credit needed for graduation. Our elementary summer camps, again, just a brief summarization, by Act 284, that requires our districts to offer school reading camps for third grade students significantly behind grade level in reading as determined by SC Ready scores. Um, successful completion of the camp is one good cause exemption. Also, if students <coughs> score a 419 or above as determined by their I Ready score, then they can be exempted. Um, it's key to point out that districts also have the right to invite students who are behind in grade level proficiency. Um, just on to the next slide, a recap of the multilingual learner camp as well as iTeams. The multilingual learner program and iTeams summer camps concluded last week on Thursday. Our students were enriched with a variety of experiences. Um, both programs ended on positive notes. Uh, we received a wonderful recap for our multilingual learners who took a field experience on Thursday, and they were very appreciative. Um, some of it was a first-time experience for many, and the uh, joy that the adults, I think, experienced exceeded what the students did. So we're thankful for that opportunity for the multilingual learners. Also, a showcase was held on Thursday by the iTeams campers. A very deserving student was awarded a scholarship to attend an upcoming camp that's gonna be held at the governor's school and that was Jeremiah Humes. Um, again, a very deserving student. So moving on to the results portions for reading camp, as noted, as I previously stated, um, some students were exempted for promotional purpose because of those two exemptions that were noted. So only two at the Andrew site were required to attend. Those two uh, met promotion requirements and are being promoted. Uh, 15 total were invited. Browns Ferry, um, Plantersville was included at that site. Again, no students were required to attend because of exemptions, but eight were invited and attended. Georgetown Middle, we so graciously thank Mr. Hillman and his staff for hosting um, this camp as well as other camps um, this summer. 12 students were invited, and again, they weren't needed for promotion status, but they attended. And the same for Sampit and Waccamaw Intermediate with the respective numbers indicated and one required attendance um, based on promotion needs and that student successfully passed. Next, our middle and high school numbers um, broken down by grade levels and subject areas. We have before us basically a summarization that outlines that all the students that needed uh, these courses for promotion successfully passed in the sixth grade. Seventh grade, next slide. Again, we had successful completion for these students in seventh grade that needed uh, these courses in order to be promoted. Eighth grade, next slide. Eighth grade, um, unfortunately, there were a couple of students that did not meet the requirements needed. Um, that included reasons of parents um, opting for them not to attend, as well as students not attending. So otherwise, those students that attended, they were very successful. High school numbers, um, much like our middle school, those students that were not successful, that did not recover the credit, attendance was mainly the issue there. However, students that were in attendance um, met satisfactory progress and were able to complete the coursework that was needed. The same applies in our math scores. Next slide, our social studies courses. And our final slide is our science courses. 
We thank everyone again for their participation with summer school and a huge hat off to our food services uh, personnel, our transportation, um, knock on wood, transportation went very well this summer. So thank you bus drivers, as well as our teachers and other staff members. So we couldn't have done it without everybody working together. So collectively, a thank you goes to all of them. Any questions? Thank you. National School Board Association membership. Good evening again, Chairman Lance, members of the board, Mr. Price. Um, this is a this National School Boards Association membership is a is an issue that's kind of popped up with us recently. And as some questions from you all arose, we realized we didn't have some answers. So we've done some digging um, about what's happened with the transition between the National School Boards Association and the consortium of state school boards associations. So just wanted to kind of give you an update on, on where we stand and, and what's happening with that um, to provide some clarification, um, at least that I needed before this, and, and maybe it will be helpful for you all. Back in the end of 2021, several states, approximately 22 states, decided they were going to leave the National School Boards Association for various and sundry reasons. Um, and so those 22 states came together and formed an alternative organization, and that's what we're now calling COSBA, the Consortium of State School Boards Associations. Now, I think there's 27 states in that consortium now, um, including South Carolina. We were one of the founding members back at the end of last year. So. It's an um, alternative organization to the National School Boards Association. Um, the South Carolina School Boards Association determines which national organization we will belong to, and they determined that we would belong to COSBA. So we've always paid our dues directly from Georgetown County School District to the State School Boards Association, and they in turn have paid the dues to the National School Boards Association. Now our dues will be going directly to, or, or through still the State School Boards Association, but from Georgetown to the State School Boards Association to COSBA now. Um, we don't necessarily have an option to join or not join the National School Boards Association as members. We are not that we're not welcome, but we've joined an alternative of organization. So with that said, the, the COSBA group is just getting up and running. They haven't, um, they've developed certain subgroups, but they don't have the breadth of services and the breadth of subgroups that the NSBA has. So the NSBA has um, Council of Urban Education, Council of um, State I think they even have like a state or a superintendent search organization. They have my organization, the Council of School Attorneys. Um, they have lots of sub organizations that are part of the NSBA. And all of those groups now that are part of the NSBA were almost, or more than half of their members have now joined COSBA, are deciding whether they're going to still be subgroups of the NSBA or standalone groups. So we're kind of in this transitional period and that sort of thing. So in terms of conferences, the NSBA at this point may offer more conferences that are more relevant to something that may interest you. And we are allowed to attend those conferences, but we have to pay non-member rates for that. Um, COSBA is doing their best to, to, to you know, kind of play catch up and to offer those same services. And so they're offering some conferences as well. Um, and those we would get the member rate for. Um, and sometimes that's a significant discount. Sometimes it's, it's not a significant discount. Um, there's a few other side pieces that, that um, we'll kind of have to decide about. There's a, a daily update that the National School Board Association puts together called National Connection, and it's a roundup of um, kind of like the, the e-clippings that we get from SCASBA for the state. It's, it's that for the national version. Um, we'll have to decide if, if we're going to pay for that service. Um, and, 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 you know, how, how all these things are going to break down. And in, we're just kind of in the middle of a, of a big transition period right now. So at this point, you know, it's just an information item for you all to kind of digest. Just be aware that there are two competing organizations. Um, you individually may be more attracted to one conference or one um, setting more than another. Um, and I don't know if you all want to decide we're only going to go to NSBA or we're only going to go to COSBA events. Um, you know, that's that's something that you all can, can think about um, or if you, you know, kind of want to continue to go to both until things are more settled, whatever it is. But 
but it's been such a, a confusing issue <laughs> um, for, for a few months, and, and I know some of you have had questions about conferences, so we just wanted to, to, to do a little digging and to try to provide some clarity to that. Are there any questions on that? Yes, ma'am. So the South Carolina School Board Association mm -hmm. elected not to go to NSBA. Yes, ma'am. But to go to the other way. That's uh, correct. Which impacts us. Right, because we don't get a choice. The, the want to make sure. Right. The, Na the State School Boards Association decided, their board that you all, you know, send delegates to and all that sort of thing, decided on our behalf. Is there some place on the internet that lists the priorities of the new association? They have a website, um, and I'll tell you, they haven't had a website for that long. What I believe to be one of their main goals, um, financial transparency is apparently a, a big um, issue um, that, that folks had took some concern with. And another thing that they um, are touting is nonpartisanship, um, which will be interesting to see how that plays out in terms of advocacy, in terms of um, you know, the, the National School Boards Association spends a lot of, a lot of um, energy influencing court decisions. Um, they, they, they file a lot of briefs as, as friends of the court, um, and that sort of by default is partisan. So we'll, we'll kind of have to see what it means to be a nonpartisan um, advocacy group. But, but it, it appears that their two main things are financial transparency and nonpartisanship. Okay. Question. Yes, ma'am. So this invoice, this says send payments directly to the National School Board Association. That's, so that's what we would have to do if we were to That's for the national connection, which is just that roundup of daily um, kind of news clippings from around the country. $5,000 for that. It's a, it's a pricey roundup. Okay. So we pay this anyway? You, you can choose. Um, and, and that was kind of what the initial okay. impetus was for having this discussion was this, this bill that we got. And we said, wait a minute, we're not a member of the NSB anymore. Why are you sending us this bill? Right. Um, but that's, that's what it would be, is that, that national connection. And there, there may be a few more perks associated with that national connection. but. I, I don't know that I can speak for all of us, but I don't know that any of us have utilized any of the other resources, if there are any. My concern is that I want us to belong to an organization that believes we're here for the kids and for the parents. You know, I don't want to belong to an organization where parents are kicked out or anything like that. And that's what I fear right now but not from the new one, but that's what I fear really from NSBA. At, if you look around what's happening in some of our states is parents are not being heard. Mm -hmm. And I think it's our responsibility to listen to them and to take heed to what our parents and our community wants. Um, and, and without you know, being on the, the governing board of COSBA, I, I, I think that's one of the main Okay. reasons why they were created was in, in response to lack of input and, and, and taking input from parents and that sort of thing and communities. I got, I got a different take on this thing. Yes, sir. Uh, and I won't be around, so this is just, this is just, just some thinking, all right? Whenever somebody talks about these organizations, uh, being nonpartisan, you need to just travel the death of this entire United, United States, and they're not going to find him. Right? The reason they are leaving the NEA is because the NEA has taken positions on some topics that I'm not going to try to get into, right. that this part of the country or the legislators feel reasonably strong about it. Now, if I were going to be around for another year to be on the safe side until this new organization comes up with something, because right now they're just a figurehead. Uh, and they don't, they don't have the resources that the NEA has right now in terms of conferences. But if I were going to be around, uh, I would hang tight for another year on both of them. Just, just some information, 
and whether or not you have partisan or nonpartisan, there's some ingrown beliefs that everybody in this room has. You know, we can sit around and play the game that some people like to play, but uh, you have to find those entities that say that, and those that actually say that, those are the people you ought to be reasonable with. Now, I never did have a chance to talk to Scott Price about what that was all about. But if somebody knows what that was all about, I wish you would tell me. Because from what I gathered up there with, with the senator, and I'm going to call any name, uh, it was purely partisan. They forced you autonomous board members to leave by threat. Now, I got that from good source now, all right? I just didn't pull that off the top. But in either case, cast the votes. I will root for you any way you decide. For the, uh, but I won't be around except to criticize you from the other side. <laughs> Have a good one. Does, is the South Carolina School Board Association, do they require us to join this organization? We. Um, are, are we our members because we're a member of the South Carolina Correct. School Correct. Okay. As long as you're a member of the South Carolina School Board Association, you are by default a member of COSPA. Can we be a part of both? No. I asked that specific question. But you can secure you can attend, the services. You can both. attend, but you can't be a member, a card-carrying member right. of both. So it's an interesting, interesting situation. The, the National School Board Association has been around since 1940, so it um, has some longevity. Um, I could say that's a good thing or a bad thing. This is a new group with new ideas, but brand new. So just... Um, it may be to our advantage to, to look at something like this. Just don't get boxed in, all yeah, right? we don't want to be boxed in. When the, because it takes a while to get up and, they think you can just get together and put to name, give something a name and get all the school boards in South Carolina to come on board. But, but, but we're not all on the same pace in, right. in this state now. You got differing strong opinion in, in boards, but I'm saying don't lock yourself in until you see that they are in fact a functioning organization. Now that is some people. Uh, you know, in my opinion, if, you know, I, I would have kind of eased into this, but from what I gathered from the powers to be up in Columbia, you didn't have a choice. <laughs> and I'll tell them to their faces too, by the way. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to send you to Columbia. Yeah, I, I've, I've been there many times. <laughs> I spent my life up there. I don't know if this is true. <clears throat> um, it, it's been on the Internet. It's been on the news. But I think one of the catalysts, just like you mentioned that there, no concrete information, one of the catalysts, I think, because it's been, was when um, I think the Attorney General, Merrick Garland, in some places, in some places where there were board meetings, sent in the National Guard, right. things like this. Now, we received a letter from our state board about that. that um, so cool. I'm not going to comment any further on that. I think that was one of the catalysts. You're correct. Okay. Now, having said that, um, they do have a website, they meaning COSBA, mm -hmm. and it's rather nebulous, you know, just like I'm, I'm looking at it now, networking opportunities for local school board members and association to enhance the effectiveness of their work and, um, you know, the, working, tracking and advocating for federal education issues and policies impacting local school boards. I mean, it's pr the, the verbiage is very similar. Mm -hmm. to the other organization, but, you know, actions speak louder than words, and I think that action that took place may have sparked this. I, I believe it was um, the, the final straw. Yeah. I, from what I understand, that there were, um, there were several issues that people had had for years ongoing that had nothing to do with the comments about parents um, at board, me board meetings and the request for National Guard, um, but, but that was, that was a, big a, big, mm -hmm. a big impact. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate you bringing this to our attention to yes, uh, have dialogue about it and to learn more about Thank you. what we know about the ins and outs of it. Thank you. It's, it's been a little bit confusing for us, so trying to get our minds around it. Go ahead. 
Thank you, Dr. Lance. I, I, although this is not an action item, it's, it's up for discussion. I believe what I hear our board saying is while COSBA continues to solidify and designate its identity, we will still um, look for resources that are provided by NSBA that may not yet be provided by COSBA, mm -hmm. and we'll take those on a case-by-case -case basis. For example, if there's a conference that NSBA offers that COSBA doesn't offer something similar, then that's something that we will consider on a case-by-case -case if there's any request for attendance. Likewise, if there's any affiliate groups, mm -hmm. for example, the, the group for legal counsel for school districts, mm -hmm. COSBA doesn't offer that, so that's something that we will want to continue to take part of so that we have that national reference. I agree. So we'll, we'll, we'll do it on a case-by-case -case basis depending on our needs right. and what is and is not provided through COSBA at the current time. That's what I think I hear yes. our board saying. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's helpful. I appreciate that feedback. And I have one more item and then I'm done. Oops, no. <laughs> we have all night. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What'd you say? Um, Bit of stop, yes. The, the final item that I have is a proposed revision to the, this was a lot of acronyms that are all spelled out, but to the intergovernmental agreement regarding the redevelopment plan for the commercial corridor tax increment financing plan. So, and all it boils down to is essentially that the city asked for an annual extension from when they have to provide their audit to us for the TIF. We had originally agreed upon January 31st every year for their audit to come to us, from the city's audit to, to come to the district um, to, to show where and how the, the tax increment financing, the TIF plan was, was being implemented and how much money was coming and going and that sort of thing. Um, they, the city figured out pretty quickly that January 31st was not a workable date for them. They couldn't get all the information that they needed. Um, and so we came to a compromise after, after several discussions of saying that their, um, their audit would be due to us annually by April 30th, um, which still doesn't give Ms. Johnson much time, um, but gives her a little bit of time to incorporate whatever the results are from the, the previous year's TIF um, to, into our next budget. So um, what you have before you is the amendment and a resolution adopting the amendment. And all the only change, again, is that date from, from January 31st to April 30th annually. And so um, bringing it as an information item this week, next time we would do it as a vote. Um, and if you all vote to, um, to use that April 30th deadline, then we would submit that to the city. Um, and that would be the only change. Is, is so that, were there issues? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, uh, what, uh, you, what you're saying is that there were issues in the past of not meeting the January 31st deadline? Correct, and we, the board agreed to participate in the TIF in the fall of 2019. So then the first audit would have been due January 31st of 2021 for the 2020 year. And 2020 just blew us all out of the water. Right. Um, but I think even with COVID and those complications, I think they realized that after that first year that January 31st just was not going to work. And so we've been in discussions about what other dates might work. Okay. Um, so that's, it, it was just, they realized it was too much of a push for them from December 31 to January 31 to get an audit. Okay. It will, it'll be tight. And we've, we kind of went back and forth with some dates, and that was as, as late as we could. Absolutely. Right. Okay. We'll bring that back for you as an action item at the next meeting then. Okay. All right. I think my show is over. Thank you. Still moving on. Board superintendent comments or requests. This is your time to shout praise or otherwise. Oops. When they have the program like was mentioned. We 
then we can't do it. Absolutely. Other comments, requests? It's all yours. Thank you, Dr. Lance. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, let me first begin by thanking you for your support for our teachers and helping us keep pace with the state salary scale. Teachers are in high demand, so salary adjustments will help us in our retention and our recruitment efforts. I'd like to commend our principals and our human resources department for their hard work at filling vacancies. At our last check, we had uh, right at 10 teaching vacancies. While we hope to have these filled before the first day of school, I know that many other districts have dozens of vacancies, while some have hundreds. I would also like to reiterate appreciation for the board's approval at our last meeting for our custodians, cafeteria workers, and bus drivers to get a pay raise. It may not be to the ideal level, but in the last two years, we have increased pay for our entry-level cafeteria workers and custodians by 14.5% and bus drivers by 10%. The state minimum pay for bus drivers is at $9.12 per hour, but Georgetown County School District's minimum is at $15.02 per hour, 39% above the state minimum. In a survey sent out to all school districts recently, 42 of the districts have responded, which is roughly half of the school districts in South Carolina. In looking at the number of school districts who responded to the finance survey, there were 20 districts whose starting pay for teachers will be higher than GCSD. Another question that was asked was, what is the district's lowest hourly rate for classified employees? And of the 42 who responded, only three were higher than Georgetown County's beginning lowest rate of $13 an hour. These numbers are sure to change as more districts finalize their budgets and complete the survey. But I wanted to share current standings as a comparison with where we stand with the uh, 42 districts that have responded thus far. All of our employees are critical to the success of our school district and, you and uh, our ongoing, your ongoing support for them is greatly appreciated. Two weeks ago, we had a very successful reunification planning meeting and safety enhancement meeting with our partners from the Georgetown County Sheriff's Office and the Georgetown City Police Department. School safety continues to be a focus and a priority moving forward. Our partners are committed to helping our students, employees, and family members feel safe while at school. There were active participants in our planning, they were active participants in our planning efforts and will continue to do so as we move forward together. Earlier this spring, we learned of a federal subaward that we were eligible to apply for through DHEC to provide retention bonuses to nurses currently employed in recognition of their service to the K-12 community during the COVID-19 pandemic. With the help of uh, Mr. Mike Caveras and lead nurse Ashley McCall, we submitted our application. We learned yesterday that an application, our application had been approved. And as a result, we will receive funds that will allow us to pay a one-time retention bonus of $3,000 per nurse to school nurses who have been continuously employed by our school district since August 21st. We have said many times how our nurses were our heroes throughout the pandemic for all of the challenges that they faced with COVID results, close contact tracing, quarantine phone calls, and hours upon hours of paperwork. This is one small way that that appreciation can be extended to many of our nurses and we are grateful for DHEC making this available to us. And finally, a huge thank you to all of our staff members who worked in our summer programs for students. There are so many to name as Dr. Giles mentioned earlier, but more of those would have, none of those would have been possible without our staff. 
So a great big thank you to all who worked this summer to make those programs possible for our students. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody? Other comments, questions? All right, as you probably noted, you do have a need for an executive short session tonight. <laughs> uh, this is necessarily mean it's going to be short. And the object of discussion will be litigation update, discussion of personal matters. Do I have a motion to? Second. It's been a move and probably second that we go to executive session. Those in favor? Aye. Opposes? None. I have it. We are now in executive session. Move and probably second that we come out of executive session. All those in favor, let it be known by saying. Aye. Aye. Opposes, nay, nay, as have it. We are now back into open session. As a result of, oh, intensive discussion <laughs> during executive session, we have, uh, a motion now. Ready? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approves the recommendation of <laughs> Superintendent Keith Price that Noreen Grant Frazier be hired as the principal of Carver's Bay Middle School for the 2022-2023 school year. Do I have a second, that? Second. Second, so moved. Okay, it's been moving, probably second. That as a result of this executive session, very entrenched discussion, we will recommend, put my hand on the shoulder, Mr. Keith Price, selection as principal of. <laughs> really? Really? Keith Price is going to be the principal. No, 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 no. no. You, wow. You, 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 read, you read that the wrong way, but I'll, I'll just ignore that. Bad antics have no place in this courtroom, so to speak. In either case, Noreen Grant. Frazier. Frazier. She was a grand one time. Right. I should have given him. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposes? None. I have it. That motion was carried, and now Carver's Bay Middle has a new principal. And if, I, if I may, Dr. Lance, oh, sure. um, okay. Ms. Grant Frazier was unable to be here. She's actually at a conference uh, in Texas attending the SREB conference this weekend, uh, or this week, so regretfully she was unable to attend. And I don't really, I really make these kind of commitments, but for those of you who live out there in the forest with me, please let's try to give her all the support that we possibly can. And I may not be around, but I will be around because mm -hmm. I'll be right up there pushing for her. Uh, all right. A personal list. Uh, have anything to say, Ms. Doc? One other action items. Dr. Milton and Mr. Doug Jenkins recommend the approval of the personal list as presented. Do you have a motion? So moved. moved. It's been moved and properly second that we accept. The administration recommendation of the approval of the personnel list as presented. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed is none. Ayes have it. Motion carried. Using the gavel, 
Hey, meeting is adjourned. <laughs> All right, Mr. Rand.